Hi everyone, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever your time zone may be. Thank you so much for joining us today for another exciting dev camp. Ted Patterson has these fabulous dev camp series and today, Ted, I believe we have a guest, Michael Kowalski. But first up, a bit of housekeeping. We have a Q&A um, chat window here that you're more than welcome to put your questions in during the call. Ted and Michael will do their best to answer them during the call. And then we have our awesome Daniel Zena, who is our producer today. My name is Kelly Kay and I work with the Power BI team and I'm a community manager. So let's get it started. Ted, how are you this morning? Michael, how are you? We're doing really well, thanks. Yeah, so uh, I work Thank on you. the uh, Power BI CAT team and my teammate, Michael Gaboski, has uh, you know committed to joining us and kind of telling us about what he focuses on, which is some really neat stuff, some advanced uh, data modeling. You know, so uh, in an earlier dev camp, I think we touched on the tabular object model. We had Phil Seamark on and kind of just started talking about touching things in the object model with code. Uh, but you're going to kind of take that, you know, to a whole new level uh, and kind of give these people some really good guidance on, you know, building data models that scale. So without further ado on my part, Michael, why don't you go ahead and uh, take it away? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ted. And uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Um, and uh, so let's get started. So um, today, the session title is called uh, Best Practices to Improve Power BI Performance and Design. And uh, just so you know, a bit of housekeeping here, uh, that all of the like links to the stuff that we're going to talk about in this session are on the Power BI uh, devcamp.net uh, website. So I would recommend that uh, either you know now or uh, whenever you're watching this video, that uh, you definitely take a look at these links because uh, they will be useful to you uh, in the future. And as far as what we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to uh, start off by just doing a quick introduction of Tabula Editor, um, and then we're going to launch into the, the main topic for this session, which is the best practice rules uh, for Power BI in Tabula Editor's Best Practice Analyzer. So without uh, further ado, um, we are going to, to jump over to uh, Tabular Editor. And so uh, Tabular Editor, just to, to, to start off, is a, an open source uh, tool that's available uh, online uh, to download. Um, and it's a fantastic tool that is uh, that can be used to uh, to manipulate uh, and, and build tabular models, um, whether it's analysis services, uh, Azure analysis services, or Power BI Premium uh, using the XML endpoint. And um, I'll just demonstrate real quickly, uh, a lot of you maybe uh, use uh, Power BI Desktop and how you can actually access a tabular editor through, uh, through Power BI Desktop. So, uh, Obviously, first you have to install Tabular Editor on your computer. Um, after you do that, uh, you can go here into your report and go to the external tools uh, ribbon. And by clicking Tabular Editor, this this icon will appear. You can actually uh, uh, open open Tabular Editor, uh, and it will automatically connect uh, to the model that you have within this particular report. Now, uh, Tabular Editor is a fantastic tool. Um, I, I highly recommend using it as many, many uh, capabilities. Um, as you can see here, uh, I've loaded a model, um, and 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 as I said, you can you can load a model either through launching uh, uh, from Power BI Desktop via external tools ribbon, or you can uh, maybe, maybe you're familiar with uh, SQL Server development tools. Uh, you can actually uh, load. The BIM file, which is uh, the the main asset of the uh, of an analysis services model, you can actually load that here into Tabular Editor, uh, and you can also connect directly to a uh, an analysis services or even a Power BI Premium uh, data set uh, into Tabular Editor. And and once you've connected to your model, you will get all of the uh, tables as well as uh, you know all of the columns and and measures that you have. In your particular model, uh, you can also even build a model from scratch uh, by importing data. 
I'm uh, just going to right click and import tables. Um, and the amount of things you can do in Tab Editor is, is, is really incredible. And there are actually some fantastic videos. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on it right now, uh, but there's some fantastic videos uh, that have already been made. In fact, if you just Google uh, Tab Editor on, on YouTube, uh, you can, um, you can, uh, I think the first video that pops up is a fantastic tutorial. So, uh, I highly recommend that uh, you go there and, 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 and view the tutorial. Um, that being said, uh, so Tab Editor has amazing capabilities and, and one of those capabilities is what we're going to focus on today. Um, and that is the best practice analyzer. And so what the best practice analyzer uh, is is it's a functionality here that allows you to set best practice rules and uh, automatically run those rules against your whole model to ensure that your model abides by the standards that you have for your particular uh, developers your, 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 and your, your business. And so we've done at Microsoft is we've actually created a codified set of rules. It's now, as of the latest release uh, published earlier this week, we now have 60 such rules which you can use uh, to, and to leverage to um, make your model uh, as best as possible. And, and these rules are uh, around many different things. I'll actually pull up here the, the blog post that, that we, um, that, that we uh, launched actually just back in February. Um, and the link to this is uh, is within the, um, the DevCamp website, but this uh, post actually goes through what are all all the rules that we've that we published. And as you can see, the rules cover a, a wide variety of things, um, from you know looking at DAX expressions, uh, prevent trying to prevent errors in your model, uh, you know looking at formatting, um, different maintenance. Um, as well as uh, what probably what we want to focus on is performance, um, because these 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 rules are not just about performance, but also about uh, about design, um, the design of your model. So we try to uh, make uh, rules that encapsulate really uh, many different scenarios and are, are are generic enough to apply to um, you know many many customer scenarios. Um, so the question is, how do you actually, uh, you know, get a hold of these rules? So uh, the rules are actually uh, located on on GitHub, uh, which the link is 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 provided here uh, on this on this site, um, and we'll actually just navigate over to the to the GitHub page. And so there's a few ways to actually load the rules. Um, I like the automated way, uh, which we'll we'll, we'll showcase uh, right now. Um, the automated way here, as, as shown here, you just have to just copy this little script here, a few lines of code, and uh, we're going to then open up Tab Editor. And you see there's a few uh, windows here. We're gonna go into the advanced scripting window. And this actually, uh, Ted was mentioning the tablet object model, and this, this window gives you access to uh, actually write C sharp code directly against the tab object model, which is a super powerful uh, technique. And so we're going to actually leverage that uh, very briefly here um, by pasting this code uh, from the GitHub uh, site here. Now, if we, we can just run this code and what this will do is actually it will uh, go to GitHub and load the latest rules onto a location on our computer with this tab editor uh, Folder on a computer where it will be uh, easily accessible by tablet editor. Um, now, all we have to do is click the play button and it will then load these rules into tablet editor. We just have to close out of tablet editor and then reopen it, and then that will actually complete the loading of the rules. Uh, so that's that's what I recommend uh, as far as loading the rules up. Uh, one thing I will point out here is that uh, tablet editor has another feature uh, called uh, custom actions, and so uh, you know we don't want to have to necessarily go to the uh, GitHub site to necessarily uh, copy this code every time. So what we can actually do is click on the plus sign, and that will open up a window. 
where we can say give this a little script a name. So say load uh, BPA rules, and let's click on the model and click OK. And now if we click go to samples, custom actions, we actually see this load BPA rules. And uh, so we can just delete this here now. And so if we go to custom actions and we click on this, we automatically now get that same code that we had. So we don't have to go copy and paste every single time that there's a new uh, a new release of, of, of the rules. Uh, so it's a nifty feature to have that. And you can do that, you can do that same technique with um, with any code that you have written here. Um, it's a way just to have quick, easy access. Now, um, I've actually already loaded the rules into this uh, tab letter, so I'm not going to go through the process of, of, of running running that script. Um, but uh, there's so now that we've actually loaded the rules, uh, how do we uh, how do we run the rules? So there's there's a few ways, um, and so so one way is we can do file and preferences. And there's this option here called background scan for best practice rule issues. And if you click that, we'll just click it here and click OK. You'll see at the bottom here, it uh, it, it shows a, uh, it actually just ran the rules basically instantaneously. We, we can click this and it will actually, uh, it, will, it will show all of the uh, best practice rules that have been violated. Now, if you have a larger model, I recommend uh, not to check that because uh, the scan may take a little bit of more time and it may cause your uh, modeling experience to be a bit slower. So um, you can uncheck it. Um, one thing I also want um, to, to highlight here is that if you open up uh, Tablet Editor through Power BI Desktop and the external tools, then you have to check this uh, allow unsupported Power BI features experimental. Um, this uh, checking this uh, will uh, allow uh, Tab Editor to, to to work and scan the model properly. Now that being said, you have to be careful because uh, there are only a subset of operations that are actually supported by Microsoft when it comes to uh, making changes for a Power BI desktop model uh, when you're making the changes in Tabular Editor. So you just have to be careful that you don't um, uh, make improper changes that then are uh, potentially corrupt your Power BI desktop file. So definitely important to read on what is supported, which uh, features are supported for uh, making changes um, going uh, making the changes in Tabular Editor and having them reflect back in Probably desktop. So the second way to uh, activate the uh, best practice analyzer is to go to tools and then best practice analyzer. And so we've actually already run the analyzer because we did it through the uh, uh, through the uh, other method. But you can also just click this refresh button and that will run the rules one more time. In fact, if you make any changes, you'll have to come in here and click refresh to make sure that uh, all the changes you made uh, are now um, assessed by by the rules. So coming in here, uh, I like to uh, collapse the rules so we can see all of them. And as you can see that they're, they're grouped to these categories, which we discussed briefly before, uh, but we have uh, you know categories for performance, tax expressions, um, maintenance, etc., and they're they're somewhat in a prioritized order, uh, with performance and say DAX expressions being more important or higher priority than something like say formatting. Uh, you know, uh, formatting is is more an aesthetic thing, and um, it's it's uh, it's not necessarily as important as as performances. Um, so we can expand, uh, you know, here we see all the different rules and we can expand each rule and actually see uh, the different objects that, uh, that that break that particular rule. So 
if we just hover over a particular object, we see that there's a description. And this is a really important uh, point because just reading the rule itself may not give enough context. Um, and it's really important to understand the full context. Now, if we, we can, so while we're here, we can click on this manage rules, or we can, another way to access this is to go to uh, tools and then manage BPA rules. But since we're here, um, let's just go to manage, go to this one here, and we're going to go to rules for the local user. Let's expand this a bit. And here we can see all the rules. And we can uh, even come in here to a particular rule, click on edit rule. And we can see a lot more information about this particular rule. Um, we can see uh, the description, uh, which gives a bit more context about the rule. And also uh, many of the rules have reference articles or videos, which were either written by uh, Microsoft or um, written by an MVP. And they provide even more context about, about why that rule is, is important. Um, and it's, I can't stress this enough how important it is uh, for you to, to, to read these descriptions and, 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 and read the reference documents to not just follow the rules blindly, but to understand the context as, as far as why the rules are, are here and, um, and, and, and give that proper context. Um, you'll also see here uh, the severity and in the context of tablet editor itself, the severity doesn't have any particular impact, but uh, one other feature of tablet editor is the ability to deploy a model through the command line and actually run the best practice analyzer while you are running that de deployment through the command line. Uh, and if you do that, then the severity kicks in and has an effect. So in that case, if you have a severity level uh, level uh, three rule, three three or higher, it will actually make the deployment fail. Level two will cause a warning, and level one will have no warning. It's the least severe uh, severity level. You can also uh, see here these particular objects that this rule applies to, as well as the, uh, the, the code that encapsulates the logic for this particular rule. And uh, since we have 60 rules here, it's a fair amount, you can actually uh, get a pretty good idea just from looking at these, at, at these expressions as far as if you want to write your own rules. Um, you can use these as examples. Uh, this this expression editor uses dynamic link. Uh, it's it's very similar to C sharp, uh, and uh, it, it's it's the, the the language that is used to encapsulate these particular rules. Um, but I want to encourage folks not just to use these rules, but to 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 use them as a as a kind of a launch pad for for you and for your teams to even create your own rules, uh, looking at um, at, at the code here and as, as examples. Okay. Coming back to the best practice analyzer, we have here some objects which break this particular rule. And let's just talk about this rule briefly here. So the rule here is to not use floating point data types. Now, floating point data types are data types uh, which are numeric, which have many, many decimal points. And um, the, the VertiPak uh, engine that tabular models or Power BI models use, the way that it compresses data and, and shrinks data, it is able to compress data better if there is, uh, uh, if there's lower cardinality or if there's, if there's uh, uh, less precision in this case. And so, um, if we if we look at these columns, let's just double. We can just double click on this here, and we'll see that this column is a data type of double. 
um, that means it has made many decimal points. If we're able to shrink that down, and you know, uh, a lot of times you don't need all those all that precision. Maybe you just need uh, four decimal points, which is what the currency um, uh, the, the currency uh, data type would be, or maybe even needs just to be an integer. In, in that case, you could really uh, improve the compression by shrinking down the precision. And uh, so now that we've we've seen that this is a, a potential like issue, if we wanted to fix this, how um, you know how how could we do that? So um, we can uh, we can actually there's there's two ways. So we can right click on this on this and uh, there's a, an opportunity to do generate fixed script or we can do apply fix. Now, uh, not all the rules actually have this. We've picked out one that does, um, but uh, this rule is a, is, a, is a simpler rule. And so for simpler rules, we're able to actually uh, generate a fixed script. So uh, let's just uh, click this and see, we'll see what happens. So you can see that it's now uh, copied a fixed script to the clipboard and we can paste it into the advanced script editor for review. So uh, let's just paste that here. And in fact, we can do it for, uh, for multiple. Um, so we can actually do shift and click, try fix script, click OK. Let's just delete this, so we can do it for multiple. And it's actually uh, put in the code uh, that we, can, we could run. Just like we ran the beginning, we, we ran uh, uh, the code to load the VPA rules. This is the same. Same type of, of, of code here. Um, and actually running this would, you can see here, would change the data type to uh, decimal, uh, reducing the precision from many uh, decimal points to just four. Um, and so if we actually run this, uh, here we are on the, uh, the weight column. And we can see that this actually, by running this, you can see now that's changed to decimal. Um, and so uh, you could actually change it here in the model itself, or you can change it in the data warehouse, but essentially reducing this precision will uh, will um, improve the compression and make your model take up less space and, and potentially make it, it faster as well. And while we're kind of here on this, I want to just highlight a, a very simple but very powerful feature of Tableau Editor is that if you were to say you made a mistake and you did something you didn't want to do, you can always just... Uh, do undo. So it's the same as uh, in, in really all programs, it's control Z. So if we just do control Z and we come back, you see now it's gone back to the uh, floating point double data type. So uh, you don't have to worry if you if you do something you didn't intend to do that uh, you can uh, rectify it by doing undo. And you can also do redo, do control Y. And uh, now it's gone back to decimal. Um, one thing I also want to point about Tableau Editor is a really cool feature is that you can go to edit and show history. And this actually shows you with all of the changes that you're making in your, uh, as you go and, uh, you know, make your model in Tableau Editor, it'll show you all of the changes that you're making uh, that you've made since you've last saved it. And uh, uh, here it actually encapsulates um, these four changes within this script because we ran it as part of a script. But uh, say as an example, we want to hide this color name. We can actually just right click and say make invisible and go back to the show history. And we'll see it, it's it's marked as uh, the color name as is hidden equals false uh, false to true. And uh, and it's not part of a, 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 a script because we just did it uh, in its own right. So, um, so again, if we if we run this and then we come back to best price analyzer, um, since we have actually running in the background, we can see that we now only have one object that has the issue uh, because the other four that had the issue have now gone away. So um, now I just want to say that the the goal here is not to necessarily uh, to to make all these issues go away. Uh, you, 
you just don't want to go blindly kind of fixing all the issues. You want to first understand the issues by reading the description and, 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 and looking at the reference article uh, and then uh, understanding that you can go through and make fixes. Um, so I'll also highlight the other way to make these fixes is uh, the ones that actually have fixes is this apply fix. Uh, apply fix, what it will do is they will actually run the code that would have been generated uh, just without you copying and pasting into the advanced scripting window. So um, again, I, I don't recommend folks doing that right away. First, you want to understand the rule. Then you want to understand what is the fix actually doing. And once you understand those two things, you should want to do it, then you can get more into this the apply fix um, scenario. So as I mentioned, the rules are categorized into uh, different areas. So we, we know we have performance, we have formatting, and I, I want to, to highlight that although we've put them into an order where performance is, uh, is, is at the top and is definitely the, probably the most important thing, to not treat the, uh, the, the formatting rules or the, the lesser priority rules as, as, as uh, don't discredit them too much because some of them may actually have, a more, uh, have an impact, maybe a more uh, indirect impact on, um, on, on, on the model. Um, and so um, I'll I'll highlight that uh, here. Just going to make a quick uh, change here. As uh, as we can see here, uh, we have this rule called hide uh, hide foreign keys and hide fact table columns. Uh, now this is just a standard best practice that we should uh, you know foreign keys sh should generally always be hidden because they're not going to be used by end users. And the fact table columns should also be hidden uh, because you will create measures that uh, on top of those and not actually let, not actually um, use the columns within a, within a, a report. Um, so the thing is, is what I want to articulate here is that actually not following this rule will potentially have an impact, an indirect impact on performance. And I'll illustrate that uh, illustrate that here. So there are a few rules which do impact performance, which rely on certain objects being hidden. And those rules, uh, or one of those rules, is the rule to remove unnecessary columns. And removing an necessary column, this is a really important rule. Uh, I know it's under maintenance, but maybe it should actually be under performance because it's 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 really important. Um, um, but it what it does is it it looks for hidden columns or uh, columns that are that are in a hidden table that are not referenced by any measures. They're not using any relationships, not using any sorting hierarchies, and they have no role of security. So in that case, they really have no function. And you could remove them, and and not really ha have your users be impacted. And uh, you know, so, some folks may say, "Well, what if they're using a report?" And that's where the is hidden comes in. You know, if something is hidden, it's generally not going to be used in a report. Uh, so uh, you run a very uh, low risk of uh, if you remove these uh, these columns uh, from it actually impacting any of your your users. So here's the thing: if you if you didn't follow these rules um, and you you haven't uh, hidden these columns as the best practice is uh, tells us to do, then those columns, which we potentially could uh, could could uh, remove, um, that they uh, they wouldn't be highlighted by that by that rule, um, and so you wouldn't be able to take advantage of that rule uh, um, to its full cap uh, capability. And that means that you would be having extra columns, uh, which would add extra memory and potentially make performance worse, both for, for, for processing as well as for end user performance.
there's another rule uh, that that also leverages the uh, hidden columns, and that rule is the this rule uh, set is available in MDX to false for non-attribute uh, columns. And so this is a more advanced property uh, uh, within tabular modeling, where uh, the engine will actually build a, an attribute hierarchy for all columns that have this property set to true. But we actually don't need this property set to true for uh, for for all the columns, and this rule encapsulates the the, the columns that we don't actually need that um, that that this property is set to true. And um, so this rule, along with the other rule of of uh, un, uh, removing unnecessary columns, wouldn't be as effective if the formatting rule um, is not followed. So I just want to highlight that just don't discount some of these uh, seemingly less important rules that are more aesthetic oriented because they may have, uh, uh, they may actually have more importance than um, they, they have at face value. Now I want to, I want to highlight, uh, I'm just gonna come back over to the, um, the uh, uh, the blog post here is that uh, actually let's go to uh, GitHub um, is that there are actually uh, some some rules which um, uh, which are are listed here which take advantage of of uh, Vertipak analyzer data where they take advantage of actually uh, uh, looking at the, the the data and the data volumes itself, um, because the rest of the rules just look at metadata. Um, now, for those of you who are not familiar with Vertipak Analyzer, it, it's it's a fantastic tool uh, created by SQL BI, which um, which shows things like column cardinalities and uh, table row counts, uh, all these really uh, useful uh, data points about your model. And so, these rules leverage that information. And so in order to take advantage of those rules, we have to uh, do a few more things. And so I've actually um, provided links here, both to instructions on how to do it, as well as a script to do it. So um, we're gonna do that real quickly here. So we'll just, there's, and to, to uh, clarify, there's actually two ways that you can load Vertipec Analyzer data into a tablet editor. Uh, the first way, what we will do, is to load it while you're in Tab Editor, you're directly connected to a server. And that can either be a Power BI Desktop file or to uh, SQL Server Analysis Services or Azure Analysis Services or a, a Power BI uh, premium uh, data set through the XMLA uh, read-write endpoint. The second way is to actually load uh, load the data through a VPEX file, which is a, a Vertibike Analyzer file, which you can get by uh, running um, Vertibike Analyzer inside of DAX Studio. So let's just try this first method. We click on uh, the script. So this takes us to this other GitHub repository where we have uh, this code here. Now, um, this looks like a lot of code, and I want you to rest assured be not to be intimidated by it um, because we're just copying and pasting here. We're not writing any code. So I'm just going to click on raw. I'm going to copy and pay, copy this. And I'm going to go um, now go to um, I have another model here, same type of model, but this one is connected, as you can see, to a, a server. Uh, it's actually connected to my local uh, SQL Server analysis services. And because this script itself has to be run against a, as I said, against a live connected server, because um, it's actually going to be querying the analysis services instance. So we paste this script that we just copied into the advanced scripting window. And we just click play. Now, in just a split second there, 
it executed all the code. You can see it made 4,197 changes uh, in the model. Um, can only imagine how long that would take to do manually, but that's the beauty of Tableau Editor. So let's see what this actually showed. So let's click on a table here. Let's say fact online sales and go here to annotations. Now annotations are simply notes that don't really affect anything. Um, uh, that are the notes against a model. So you can make notes on, on tables. And so that's what this does. It actually takes all the Redpack Analyzer data and adds it as these annotations to each object. So you can come here and see the actual row count for this table. There's this many rows, the table size in bytes of how big this table is, and even the, the fact that this table takes up 33.5% of the overall model size. And uh, for really any object, uh, we can come in here and see lots of statistics um, that you would see in Wordback Analyzer, only here they're shown uh, in Tableau Editor. And th the beauty of this is that uh, although it may be easier to see, you know, when you're looking at this in DAX Studio, it certainly is. But if you want to actually scan your model for Wordback Analyzer data, this is a great way to do it because you actually have all this now stored as metadata. And so that's where uh, these, these rules come into play. If you go back um, as an example, one of these rules that uses Vertback Analyze data looks at large tables should be partitioned. You know, how do we know what a large table is? How big is a large table? So um, if we come in here to the Managed BPA rules, we can actually come in and find that particular rule. Here we have it, large table should be partitioned, edit the rule, and we'll see that this actually looks for this annotation of vertipack row count on the table. And it, it looks just to see if it's over uh, 250,000 rows. That's what we've, uh, or 250, um, uh, 25, sorry, 25, uh, a million rows um, as being a, a, a large table. Um, so uh, this rule leverages that verbic analyze data. Obviously, if you wanted to find it differently, you can always change this rule. But uh, the main point I want to illustrate here is that uh, is that by by adding the vertebrae analyzer data to uh, as annotations we've done here, either this using this method or loading it through a Vertipack Analyzer file, uh, you have access to all this extra really rich information. Uh, and it's, it's, it makes this tool extremely powerful because uh, when we analyze customer models, uh, these are really the two things you look for. We want the model file itself and we want the Vertipack Analyzer file. And what we're doing here is we're synthesizing the two into one, uh, into one a piece which we can actually then use the BPA rules to scan the whole model automatically and um, not just on metadata but also on this vertipick analyzer data. So it's it's I think it's super powerful. Um, and we've developed several rules which um, which would take advantage of this. And not only does having the vertipick analyzer data here help as far as um, as far as uh, running the rules, but it also helps in another area. And, and that area is some that uh, some folks want to do that, you know, we talk about the priority of, of rules, which rules should, should be um, looked at first, as far as performance and, and DAX expressions, but also within each rule, which objects should be prioritized as far as can we remove a particular column or, um, and so, what this Vertipack Analyzer data allows us to do is actually quantify the savings that we would get by following particular rules. Now, uh, on the GitHub site, you'll actually see a link here to um, to this post, which uh, which describes what I'm about to show. And um, within that post, there's a link to uh, to this my, my GitHub page here. Um, 
which actually uh, has these these two scripts, which calculate that quantify the the the, the, the savings. So um, let's come in here and just let's click this. So we've done this for two rules, and um, we'll just copy this, and let's come back in over here. And we'll just paste this in. And so what I want to say here is that uh, quantifying the savings of rules is not particularly easy. Uh, say, for example, we want to uh, quantify the savings of, um, of, of, you know, uh, let's come back into the rules here and uh, quantify the savings of, um, you know, avoiding to use the if error function. It's difficult to quantify that exactly. Um, uh, say it makes your uh, queries improve, you know, 10%, 20%. It's, it's difficult to say. Um, but, uh, but there are some things that are a bit easier to quantify. And for that, um, it's regard to two rules. It's actually two rules that we already discussed. One of them is um, removing unnecessary columns. And the second one is setting the is available in MDX to false. And how we quantify it is we actually identify the memory savings that you would get by either removing those columns or setting the is available in MDX property to false. And so um, we can, so this one here is for removing unnecessary columns. So we run the script. Remember, we can only run the script if we have the revert back analyzer data saved, which um, which actually um, have to go to the other model uh, here. So we um, we can click uh, play, and we're going to get uh, two outputs. The first output that we're going to get is the total number of bytes that we would save if we removed all the columns which uh, are highlighted by the best price analyzer uh, that we can remove. But say we don't want to just blindly remove all of them. We want to prioritize which ones to, to actually remove. So we click close. We can actually see here now um, a list of all the columns we could remove as well as their tables, as well as uh, the column size and bytes. So we can just copy this to clipboard, close this out, open up Excel, uh, paste this into Excel, uh, and we can just order it largest to smallest. And now we can actually see um, in bytes the, the largest columns that would be the highest priority to remove. Uh, if we're able to actually remove that column after checking with the business. Uh, so I think this is really important as a lot of folks want to know uh, the priority in which they they kind of attack the best practice analyzer results. And so, so this, at least for these two rules, gives that priority. I want to take a little bit of time to hide. I now want to, uh, I want to show uh, some, uh, something more, uh, see more recent um, that I actually just learned, um, made a blog post about it uh, uh, on Monday, actually, where you know I talked here about the there's a few ways of of running the best price analyzer, and and that is uh, first you can you know run it through the best price analyzer from the tools. You can do uh, file uh, preferences and get it uh, here this way. Um, you can also run it through the command line uh, as part of a deployment. But there's a fourth way of running the best price analyzer, uh, which is also, I think, really, really cool. And so let's talk about that. This is kind of the same GitHub on my, on my GitHub page, which is linked uh, within the uh, Power BI Dev Camp. You'll, uh, you'll see a, um, this, this uh, script here for export BPA results. So we click on that and we get, we're going to copy this script here and we're going to come into uh, the advanced scripting window. We're going to paste this here. 
So uh, again, you're going to see you've seen a lot of code here, but you don't have to. You don't have to uh, just have to run it. You don't have to uh, even be able to understand what the code is doing. Uh, it, it's just it try to make it convenient for you. So all you have to do is click play. So if we click play, what this will do is it will actually run the best price analyzer against all the all the rules and output it into this um, this little window here. Now this is not a very friendly window, but we can copy the clipboard as we did before. Click close. We can open up our Excel again, get a new tab, and click paste. And now we have all of the rules that um, we have all all the rules and all the objects that break those rules. Essentially, the same output that we have here, only we have it now available in Excel. So uh, we can do you know more of an analysis and 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 um, and figure out uh, you know like filtering, for example, if we want to just uh, only we'll look at the you know performance uh, rules and we want to look at only you know rules that actually have a a fixed expression um, or you know only specific severity rules. We can we can do that um, just as you would modify anything in Excel. And so uh, just want to highlight this as another way to interact with the best price analyzer and um, to be able to export the results into another application where uh, you can even develop reporting on this um, or to do kind of more in-depth analysis as far as um, maybe you want to uh, send the list of columns that you can remove to a stakeholder group so they can sign off on which columns you are actually permitted to remove. This is a very easy way to do that because you you have uh, you know all the rules you know here in Excel. You can just filter onto that particular rule and send it off as an email, and you're you're on your way. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I learned this actually just uh, last week. Uh, Daniel Autocure, I want to give a, a big shout out to uh, as the creator of Tablet Editor. Uh, it, he uh, sent over this this uh, this script, uh, which we have uh, I've shown shown here, which I think is super helpful. Um, and uh, you know, without him, uh, we wouldn't have this uh, this tool or the best practice analyzer um, uh, tool tool either. So. Uh, Huge thanks to to him and all of uh, all of his support um, for creating Tab Letter. That pretty much concludes the presentation. Um, Ted, I'm not sure if there's any questions we want to take. Uh, now we have about uh, four minutes left uh, in the meeting. If you want to take any questions from the audience, we don't really have any questions. When I talk, I get questions. I think you must be a lot more clear than me in your explanations. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, God. I just uh, so impressive. You know all the work you've done. And then just the presentation, the way that you kind of spent an hour and just really kind of went through. You know, so now we have a great recording for anyone who kind of wants to, you know, get up to speed on this. You know, so, um, you know, it's very impressive. Anything that you're working on, you know, extending this in the future? You know, how do you see yourself kind of growing this out over the next year? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, you know, we, we launched this back in February. Um, and with a, a, a large set of rules and, you know, we... Uh, expanded it just last week to now 60 rules. And so we want to continue to refine these rules as we are able to see more scenarios and, uh, you know, with customers and also get feedback from, you know, from folks such as uh, those that are, are watching this video and, and Power BI and Tabular developers. You know, we would love to get your feedback so we can, uh, you know, integrate uh, integrate that uh uh, into these rules. Actually, um, just got. Uh, I just launched a, a v1.1.1 um, uh, yesterday because uh, a user had had uh, shown how one rule could be uh, made even better, and so so we did that. So you know we want to continue to um, make our own investments and to uh, find more scenarios, but also look to 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 the the community. Uh, to give feedback so we can make these rules even better. Uh, we want to make the process for improving models as far as their design and performance e you know, even easier uh, throughout time. So 
Yeah, I, I think we also just to chime in one more point, we're seeing a lot of evidence that, you know, as we're getting more and more large and complex models, you know, you just can't really manage them in Power BI desktop. And now I think we're going to have this real need for people with the skills to move beyond Power BI desktop and understand that. And to me, there's not a lot of people in the industry that can do that, but there's going to be a growing demand. You know, so I think this is a great topic for people to jump on if they really kind of want to, you know, be able to exude expertise in an area that, you know, is really needed. And there's not that many people, you know, that are good at it yet. But with your guidance, you know, we're going to have a new generation of people that, uh, you know, are going to be able to take this and run with that. So I really appreciate you uh, committing and kind of spending the time and really just kind of presenting some great content here today, Michael. So I'd like to thank you for that. Absolutely. And they all stand up. You want to, um, the, yeah, anything else yeah, we need sure. to do? To I mean, I wanted to take the opportunity to thank both you, uh, Michael and Ted, for your for your time and for your expertise today. Um, I'd like to encourage everyone to check out the Power BI community page. I put the link in the chat as well. Um, and then check out our YouTube channel and subscribe for past DevCamp videos and upcoming videos as well. Um, with one minute left, do you feel like maybe we could get one question in? We have one from Donald. Uh, it says, with Tabular Editor 3, getting announced, will BPA continue to be fully supported in the free version? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Uh, actually, just yesterday was the announcement of Tablet Editor 3 that'll uh, be available uh, uh, for purchase uh, on, on June 1st. And so all these rules will will work in Tablet Editor 2 or 3. Um, so you don't have to worry about, uh, about that. Um, actually, Tab Letter 3 will essentially uh, pick up the same rules that you have if you already have Tab Letter 2 and just load them automatically, uh, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, so um, everything will work in both. Uh, anything to add, Ted? Or Well, it's kind of interesting to see how the uh, story of those we've just now kind of have two different versions of Tabular Editor, um, you know, so I think Michael, like me, is kind of waiting to see how things play out, uh, you know, but certainly we would love to see the guy who put all the energy into creating Tabular Editor uh, do well in a commercial sense because he struggled so hard, put so much time and effort into it. So, you know, I, I feel really good that, you know, he's got something that has value and he should be recognized for that. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye bye.